Joining us for Insight is Representative James Tallarico. Your bill to cap out-of-pocket costs for insulin has bipartisan backing, but there are critics. How do you respond to those who say you should focus on drug manufacturers instead of insurance companies? Well, I think we have to do both. Um, this is a complex problem, uh, but it it's one that needs to be solved um, from a variety of different angles. Um, but the blame doesn't just fall on the manufacturers. Um, in some cases, uh, insulin products have actually decreased in price, yet out-of-pocket costs have increased uh, over the past few years. So uh, health insurance companies also uh, carry some of the blame uh, with this problem. And so that's why our bill is focusing on out-of-pocket costs. But we also have um, uh, HB 18, which is helping to, to provide discounted prices for uninsured Texans. So this is an all of the above approach uh, where we are attacking this problem from multiple angles. Your personal story surprised a lot of people, I think. Tell us how you discovered you had diabetes. Yeah, you know, in, in May of 2018, I was a healthy 28-year-old running for this seat that I now hold. And I decided to walk the entire length of my district and hold town halls along the way. And, you know, I hiked Big Bend every year. I wasn't worried about a 25-mile walk. But halfway through it, I started to feel nauseous and fatigued. Um, I threw up multiple times during the walk. Um, when I finally finished it, I don't know how I finished it, but I did. And when I got home, I, I thought all I needed was a good night's sleep um, because I figured I was just dehydrated. Um, but I ended up sleeping for 36 hours. And so my, my family got concerned. They rushed me to the emergency room where nurses checked my blood sugar. I don't think I'd ever had my blood sugar tested before. And uh, a normal blood glucose level is below 100. Mine was 900. And I was in a state of diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a, a life-threatening condition that leads to coma and death without insulin. And so I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes on the spot um, and spent five days in the ICU and thankfully made a full recovery. I think it was great that you shared all of that. What are you hearing from your constituents and from other lawmakers? You know, since I shared my own story uh, this week, uh, my, my office has been flooded with calls and emails and, and social media messages from folks who, um, who suffer from, from this condition um, uh, and from folks whose family members have, have diabetes. A lot of parents uh, whose children have type one diabetes as well. And they were so thankful that someone had spoken about uh, this disease and about their own experience. But most of all, they're thankful that someone is finally taking action to address uh, this, this skyrocketing cost of insulin. You know, just in the past 20 years, the price of insulin has increased 1200%. Just in the last 10 years, it has nearly tripled. Uh, and we have folks in our state uh, in the United States of America, the richest country in the world, dying because they can't afford this, this life-saving medication. There is a lot happening at this time in the legislature. What are you doing to move this bill forward? You know, thankfully, uh, we've gotten bipartisan support uh, from Republicans and Democrats. We've also gotten bicameral support from the Senate and the House. Um, in my chamber, in the House of Representatives, we have 103 members signed on to this bill. That's a supermajority. And so I'm, I'm thankful that, that we have worked so hard along with our advocates and our organizers uh, to, to build support for this legislation over the past few months. And so I'm feeling very optimistic about its chances of passing. Support, but a lot of support, but there's still a lot left to do. I, I thought it was interesting the timing of your diagnosis because that was the same year that I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And, you know, I've also dealt with some of those cost issues because I wear an insulin pump and have a blood glu glucose meter, um, which aren't always covered by insurance, too. So there's a lot more to think about beyond just insulin. That's exactly right. And I, and I was so so thankful that you reached out and shared your story as well, Josh. And it, and it should just go to show that that this disease affects uh, anyone. Um, and and it, and it happens to you, even if you're, you know, a healthy young person like like both of us. Um, and and that just underscores the need to make sure that we are we are guaranteeing health care for everyone in this state, no matter who they are, no matter how much money they make, no matter where they come from. Um, uh, and, and as you mentioned, this is a complex problem. Thankfully, the bill that I filed doesn't just cap the, the out-of-pocket costs for insulin itself. It also caps the out-of-pocket costs for insulin supplies, whether it's, it's needles, whether it's uh, sensors um, or meters, as you mentioned. Um, so we are trying to be as 
as comprehensive as possible, but this is just a, a step toward our eventual goal, uh, which is free insulin and free insulin supplies for Texans with diabetes. Representative Talarico will be following your bill. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for covering it.